Now, what I've just described here is also relevant to the issue of child labor. This is another thing they throw against the market economy. You know, can't have free market because you know kids have to work, and and if if we had a non-market economy, the kids could just skip through meadows all day. You know, and that that's and and that's that's the difference. But the question becomes, why are the children working? So no, no one asks this question. The, the assumption is that if you have one of these third world countries where a lot of children work, the assumption is that all the parents in that country just stink. Like this is like a country of stinko parents. Like we should just go in there and just take all these children away from these savages, you know, they, who don't know how to raise children. But we really should ask, I mean, try to understand the world around us. You know, like why are the kids working in the first place? It's because the society they live in is so un physically unproductive that if the kids don't work, the family starves. That's why they work. That's why child labor has existed since the beginning of time. It's not like people said, okay, capitalism's here, kids, off to the mines. <laughs> kids have been working forever in every society. It never occurred to anyone that someday you could live in a society in which your labor was so productive thanks to the capital goods at your disposal, that you could work and earn enough purchasing power so that your kids wouldn't have to. Never occurred to anyone. But look at what we have here. I mean, look at it in our society. Think of how much more work one person can do with a steam shovel than he could do with a regular shovel. And multiply that, extrapolate that through our whole, our whole economy. But up to the free market uh, came along, up to the capitalist economy, Everybody just assumed, okay, life consists of grinding poverty and then you're dead. Everybody assumed that. So nobody in the year 1100 is going around protesting poverty. No one. You will not find anyone protesting poverty or having a hunger strike or a candlelight vigil about poverty because everybody assumed, everybody assumed, of course you're going to be poor. That's the way life is. You're poor. Live with it. I mean, even the king, even the king has to urinate and then toss it out the window. Because they didn't have flush toilets until very recently. The king, for heaven's sake. All right, now that one, Chad may end up bleeping out. We'll have to just see. But So you understand my point, that it's only when the free market comes along and we see that poverty begins to diminish, that people become impatient with poverty. And they say, wait a minute. They say, for the first time, it seems possible that poverty could be done away with. Then they start complaining about it. But what's the point complaining about it when you think it is a fixture of life? So in terms of the child labor issue, child labor goes away, not because you pass a law saying children aren't going to work. It goes away because the economy, thanks to the free market, becomes capital intensive enough that it can produce enough stuff that mom and dad can work, the kids don't have to. That's what does it. Now you can say, but wait a minute, I know we've had child labor laws. Oh yeah, those things are just super. They work great. There's no evasion of those laws at all. Those are really well observed. In fact, in Bangladesh, the British charity Oxfam pointed out that when a bunch of Americans and Europeans were, were griping and complaining about uh, uh, child labor in Bangladesh, and I don't mean to make light, I mean nobody likes child labor. The point is it, to, to say that we can just pass a law against it is like saying we'll pass a law against gravity and then we'll all fly. I mean, it's, I wish the world were that simple. Like, yeah, there's, gee, there's something about the world I don't like. I'll just pass a law and it'll just go away. I mean, how, how, how childish and juvenile is that? But anyway, that's how, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, a lot of our teachers seem to think. But anyway, so they've they're got this big, big um, campaign against uh, child labor in Bangladesh. So what happens? Did child labor go away when Bangladesh got rid of it? The Bangladesh government got rid of it? No. What happened was, as Oxfam reported, the children either went into prostitution instead, which is, you know, as bad as it is to work in a sweatshop, you know, obviously it could be worse. They either went into uh, prostitution or they starved. That's what happened. Well, nice going, geniuses. W way to solve that problem. <laughs> but that was, that was the approach. Even the International Labor Organization, which doesn't concede anything like this, admits that, okay, the reason the kids are working is that the society is so poor that they're contributing at least a quarter of the family income. And when you're living in a society like that, if you lose a quarter of the family income, you're de that's it. You're dead. That's it. So what, we, what they need is more capitalism. And, and, and that would sound like, uh, no one would take this seriously, right? I mean, in, uh, you know, on 
MSNBC or whatever, but that is obviously, when you think about the logic of it, that is obviously what they need. There is no other physically uh, plausible solution.